the knowledge gap. That's the first one. So this is a tough one. What we think we know versus what we actually know. Our minds are finite. There's only so much we can fit into them. There's only so much time we have. We're not going to discover everything. But we should try because if we don't do anything, we're going to come up with a strategy that's based on nothing. The first step of making strategy real is figuring out the big aha to gain sustainable competitive advantage. In other words, a significant, meaningful insight about how to win. It's from the author of Good Strategy, Bad Strategy. He also has that kernel I talked about. He talks about insights. And in fact, a lot of these strategy authors talk about insights. And personally, I can say that is also the thing that I think is the most important. When you're thinking about a strategy, it's the insights that matter. Because if you don't have insights, then your strategy can just be fluff, just something you made up. Insights are super important. What is an insight? An insight is what I know plus what I observed. So maybe you know a lot about transportation and you're working for an app doing mobility and you see somebody struggling with their commute, that might pop into your mind some sort of insight. Kind of like a creative idea, but it happens when we're doing research. So it's that aha moment. It feels like a, a lightning bolt in your brain and everything just sort of clicks together. You know, like your system one and your system two kind of start working together and suddenly you have an idea. That's, that's an insight. That's super important. People would say that the whole UX research is just insight generation, the whole point generate insights. So super important for strategy. You'll see a lot of people talking about the difference between good and bad strategy is good strategies based on insights, bad strategies based on fluff. So this gap, knowledge. So what you'll see, the way you'll know you're dealing with the knowledge gap is the company will not want to face the problem. So maybe they're in denial. Maybe you're noticing a problem and they're like, that's not a problem. We just need to execute. Keep churning out that design work. Don't, don't look at the problem. This is kind of a knowledge gap. It ends up with this like template style strategy where it's like a bunch of buzzwords and nobody knows what it means. Vague, fluffy, that sort of thing. They'll say stuff like, we don't need to do research. We know the company already. You know, if you're a UX designer, you're familiar with that. We'll say it about users all the time. So what do you do about this? The research track. Something to think about here. Do your research and you'll move from the state of confusion into less. This is the classic design squiggle, kind of shows what the design process feels like. So this research track is a way to create a strategy. It shouldn't feel unfamiliar to you. Just like when you do research before you do a design, kind of the same thing. But of course, strategy is also design. So where do you do research? You do research in three places. You've got the company, the customer, and the competitors. So you're not just talking to the customers anymore. Now you're talking about the competitors, you're talking about the company. And this is where you can use your sources. These are kind of the three lenses of strategic research. Now, this is super interesting because right here in this green spot, this is why customers choose you because your competitors aren't doing these things. And this is what your company does. And this is what your customer wants. This is the crossover between what your customer wants and what your company does, but what your competitors are not doing. That's a pretty key concept in strategy is not doing what your competitors are doing. People talk about like competitive advantage and all these sort of like military tactics and things like that. To me, I think what's really interesting about this is that if you're focusing more on a specific customer, you're providing a better experience for that particular customer. You might be abandoning another customer. You might say, we're not going to deal with this customer. We're going to switch and focus on this customer because we've got an advantage here. Our customers, aren't, our competitors aren't really looking at that customer. So we're going to focus on them. And that's how you'll see, I think in the end, a lot of people will focus on things that their competitors aren't doing. But in the end, I think it's good for the customer in, in, in general because you're making a better experience for a more specific customer. So that's kind of how I can think about com competitive advantage in a way that's not just like, one side fighting the other and things like that. It's not battle. We're not doing military strategy anymore. We're just talking about how to create the best user experience for our customer. This is a concept called unique value proposition. So this is a really important term and something you'll be doing a lot in strategy work. So the research track, your key stakeholders here are the business leaders and users. So you're going to do some interviews. You can interview the business leaders because it's pretty tough to figure out the current strategy. 
it's rare that they, someone can just tell you what the current business strategy is, what the current product strategy is. A lot of times it'll just sort of be in someone's head and it'll be super vague. Just like we talked about at the beginning, strategy is very vague. So you might have to ask people. So you can do your user interviewing with people at the company. Stakeholder mapping is also super important. You're going to have a lot of them in these projects. Desk research, you know, you can look at the market, the industry, the competitors, even your own internal drive, your company drive, your company wiki. There's a lot of information you want to look at just to make sure that you are understanding things uh, properly, understanding the critical factors. Policy design, we talked about a bit, and value proposition design as well. But these are some areas that are super helpful. I think the key skills here are research, analysis, and especially synthesis, because we're not just saying, here's our research, make a great decision, good luck. We're saying, here's our research, which informed our strategy. So there's like an actual design, you know, you're following up with this kind of a solution. So a synthesis is how you connect your research with your strategy. So that's super important. Something that a lot of business analysts won't do. They'll just sort of create a strategy in a spreadsheet. But you as a designer can make a strategy from a lot of research. You take a lot of inputs and synthesize them into a design. So that's a real power of designers. Here's an example from Marty Kagan's book, Empowered. So there was a company that was doing applications. They were doing job applications and they had two users, the people who posted jobs and the people who wanted the jobs. So the employers and the seekers. They found out an insight and this fed their strategy. So they found out that for the employers, eight to 25 qualified, qualified applicants was ideal. Based on a lot of data, they just realized, okay, we want to get our employers eight to 25 qualified applicants. So that made their product strategy look like this. Let's help employers get ideal applicant numbers. So let's really go for this range. Makes sense. But if you're a designer working on that team, you should still probably do with a little bit of guidance, a little bit more of a guardrail here. So there's another insight that happened. Window of opportunity for job seekers is 48 hours. So they found out this is on the seekers. So they have 48 hours once they sign up for the service. If they don't apply for a job, they generally don't apply to anything. So there's like a window we have here. So looking at these two insights, you also can have a UX strategy from this. So our UX strategy is help seekers find matches in the window. So we got to get them finding a match within 48 hours or nothing's going to happen. So here's an example of product strategy and a UX strategy. I think this is a good example because they're pretty similar. And I think that is the reality. A lot of times you're not going to have an easy time extricating the product strategy from the UX strategy. The thing to think about there is for the product strategy, the user of a, of a product strategy is the whole product team. But for a UX strategy, it's the design team. So whatever's most useful for those two groups, that's kind of how you can tell them apart. But they will be kind of similar sometimes.